Welcome to RWM Blue Water Ministry. I'm your host, Bob Manut. The title of today's message is The Temptation of the Mark. We seem to be coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic. Governments around the world are beginning to ease restrictions. Uh, it may be some time before we are totally free of all restrictions. But we have seen some crazy stuff in the last couple of years. Huge lines of people at vaccination clinics. Restrictions on unvaccinated people. Unable to dine inside. Unable to attend gyms or concerts, etc. Allowed only to get essential services such as groceries and, and visit pharmacies. People being fired from careers because they would not take the vaccines. Police, military, healthcare workers, restaurant servers, most recently truckers. Speaking of truckers, there was the trucker protests. The Canadian government uh, went to war with the truckers, not only clearing the protests and, and the streets of the capital city, but seizing trucks, threatening to auction them off, freezing bank accounts so they cannot buy or sell, freezing bank accounts of anybody who donated to the trucker cause. This is what we have seen. I have done some teachings on this website on end times. You know, what does the Bible say is coming in the last days? Now, if you go to my website, RWM Blue Water Ministry, uh, at the top it's got videos, and then over the right hand side you can select end times, and, and you'll see a number of, of videos in a, in a series, Jesus is Coming Soon, uh, and you can refer to that if you want more details on what the Bible says about end times. Um, My wife and I were driving in our downtown area the other day and uh, amongst the traffic and we, there's pedestrians on the street and, and out of the blue my wife said I feel so sorry for the people who will take the mark because they don't know that it will doom them to hell and destruction. Let me, let me say that again just so you catch it. My wife said, I feel so sorry for the people who will take the mark because they don't know that it will doom them to hell and destruction. Now, if you have not heard that before, that is what the Bible says. Well, anytime somebody mentions the Bible or Jesus, many people shut down. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to talk about it. They change the subject or they walk away. But one day, they will stand before God and they will say, but we didn't know. And he will say, because you did not listen to the people I sent to you. Regarding the pandemic, I heard a lot of people say, I got the vaccine because I wanted to keep my job, or I wanted the freedom to travel, or there was other activities they wanted to do. I wanted to visit my elderly and ailing parents. There's a variety of reasons. But the same rationale will be applied one day when the government will require you to take a mark, which could be a QR code to be put on your forehead or hand. So listen to what the Bible has to say. Revelations 13, 5 and 10. Then the beast was allowed to speak great blasphemies against God, and he was given authority to do whatever he wanted for 42 months. So I'll just explain the 42 months for a moment. Um, a, a time will come when the trumpet uh, will blow uh, by the angels, and all of God's people will be lifted from the earth, and that's known as the rapture. After that comes seven years of tribulation. The point of 42 months, that's half the seven years. And let's talk about the, the beast. And it says, He spoke terrible words of blasphemy against God, slandering his name and his dwelling, that is, those who dwell in heaven. And the beast was allowed to wage war 
against God's holy people and to conquer them. And he was given authority to rule over every tribe, people, and language, and nation. Now, some of you might say, well, hold it, hold it. If, if, if all of God's people was taken off the earth, then, uh, then he was able to wage war against God's people. Like, I thought they were gone. Well, let me say, when the rapture happens and all of God's people come off the earth, there's going to be a lot of people who heard the message of the gospel and did not surrender to it, who the day after the rapture suddenly are going to be believers. Suddenly, if they're believing in God and the Son, Jesus Christ, then suddenly, as believers, they will be God's holy people. And the enemy, the beast, is going to wage war against them. And so it says the beast was allowed to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. He, he, he's going to win. Uh, he was given authority to rule over every tribe, people, language, and nation. And all the people who belong to this world worship the beast. And when it says he was, he was given authority to rule, just pause for a moment. Let me, let me just give you this comparison. Right now, like in Canada, our Prime Minister uh, has issued um, emergency uh, uh, issues, uh, uh, bills to, to emergency powers, okay? And suddenly, he's, he's dictating what's going on and police are obeying him. They're breaking down the street, they're locking, they're, they're seizing people's bank accounts, they're freezing them so people can't accept, uh, access their money. Uh, there's a whole variety of things that are happening. So let me say, the Bible talks about there is coming one who, who, and it refers to him as the Antichrist, who, who one day there will be a new world order. There will be a earthly world government with a leader. And that leader is going to issue commands. And it will be the same thing as, as martial law right now when he just dictates this is what must happen. And he says, all people who belong to this world worship the beast. They are the ones whose names were not written in the book of life that belongs to the Lamb, who was slaughtered before the world was made. So let me just say, when it says the Lamb, it's referring to Jesus Christ. And when it talks about the book of life, well, anybody who accepts Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they ask for the sins to be forgiven, and they make Jesus Lord and, and, and dedicate the rest of their lives to following Him and obeying His word, they become Christians, they're cleansed, they're forgiven, and their names go in the Lamb's book of life. So what this is saying is, uh, who are the ones who uh, obeyed the commands of, of the, the, the beast? They are the ones whose names were not written in the book of life. That belongs to the Lamb. So, it says, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Anyone who is destined for prison will be taken to prison. Anyone destined to die by the sword will die by the sword. This means that God's holy people must endure persecution patiently and remain faithful. And let me just say, when it talks about people going to prison or people destined to die of the sword, this is talking about God's holy people. When the beast comes against you and conquers you, you're going to be required to take the mark, uh, bow down to the, 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 the statue, the, the image of the beast, and those who don't will die. And uh, so it's talking about those destined to die will die for their faith. Revelation 13, verses 14 to 17a. And with all the miracles he was allowed to perform on behalf of the first beast, he deceived all the people who belong to this world. So again, I just want to point out, you've got God's people, but then you've got people who have rejected Jesus, rejected God, uh, rejected anything the Bible has to say. They belong to this world, and they will be deceived um, because the truth isn't in them. They don't have the truth. He deceived all the people who belong to this world. He ordered the people to make a great statue of the first beast who was fatally wounded and then came back to life. He was then permitted to give life to this statue so that it could speak. Then the statue of the beast commanded that anyone refusing to worship it must die. He required... Everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to be given a mark on the right hand or on the forehead. And no one could buy or sell or anything without that mark, which was either the name of the beast or the number representing his name. And if you read later on, that's where it talks about the number of, the, you know, of Satan being 666. Some people have said, well, that reference 666 maybe is connected to 
uh, on our computers, www, the World Wide Web. Um, other people talk about the marks that, oh, so I said, could, could be a QR code. We say that digital identity is coming to the forefront now and people are promoting it. And uh, anyway, all these things are possibilities. But no one can buy or sell without that mark, which is either the name of the beast or the number of the of people. I mean, so the same rationale people have used, let's get the vaccine. And I know today it makes sense to get the vaccine. If, you, if you've got compromised health or if you're vulnerable, if you're part of one of the elderly, uh, you, you want to get the vaccine because it may help you with, uh, but it'll be the same thing. The people who said, I took the vaccine because I want to build travel. I took the vaccine because I never saw anything without that mark. So in that, in that day, in that day, people are going to rationalize and say, well, you know, I mean, if we want to eat, we're going to have to take the mark. Uh, if we want to feed our families, we're going to have to take the mark. Again, listen to the word of God. Revelation 14, verse 9 to 12. Then a third angel followed them, shouting, Anyone who worships the beast and his statue, or who accepts his mark on their forehead or on their hand, must drink the wine of God's anger. It has been poured out full strength into God's cup of wrath. And they will be tormented with fire and burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and the Lamb. The smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever, and they will have no relief day or night. And they, for, for they have worshipped the beast and his statue, and have accepted the mark of his name. So understand, if you, if you worship the statue, the beast, or if you take the mark, you're aligning yourself with Satan. There, there's an allegiance being required. Jesus is asking you to come and follow me. And, and the beast is saying, take the mark, and that will align with Satan. And the punishment that comes upon Satan is going to come upon anybody who takes the mark. There's going to be a temptation to take the mark. There's, you know, uh, there will be a come a point in time when suddenly uh, you'll be faced with, I can either take the mark and live and buy and sell, or I can get in this lineup where people are being beheaded for their faith. And it will take great courage to voluntarily be beheaded because you refuse to take the mark. But it's that great faith in Jesus that will allow you to die for him that will allow you to live for him for eternity. And I know that's a hard thing. That's going to be a hard decision to make in those days. And, I'm, and, and I, as I presented it, it will never be easier to serve Jesus than it is right now. If you turn to Jesus today, it will never be easier. You're not going to have any opposition. You have very little opposition. Um, the enemy will come against you and speak, speak lies to you, and, and some friends may abandon you. But it'll never be easier to serve Jesus than it is today, because in those days, when it comes time to live, I mean, because they may, may not be living for Jesus, they may be dying for Jesus. And the alternative is, take the mark. But that'll doom you to destruction. And that's what the title of this message is, The Temptation of the Mark. Verse 12, this means that God's holy people must endure persecution patiently, obeying his commands and maintaining their faith in Jesus, because the only way you're going to go and die for him is to have faith in him. Revelation 16, 2, so the first angel left the temple and poured out his bowl on the earth, and horrible malignant sores broke out on everyone who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped his statue. There is judgment coming on those who who lack faith in Jesus and who are deceived and take the mark to live and they're going to suffer, suffer, suffer. Revelation 19, verse 11 and 19 and 20. Verse 11, Then I saw heaven opened up and a white horse was standing there. Its rider was named Faithful and True, for he judges fairly and wages a righteous war. That rider is Jesus. Jesus is on a horse and uh, he, wages, he wages a righteous war. Verse 19, Then I saw the beast and the kings of the world and their armies gathered together to fight against the one sitting on the horse and his army. And the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who did mighty miracles on behalf of the beast, miracles that deceived all who had accepted the mark of the beast and who worshipped his statue. Understand, anybody who takes the mark or worships the statue, they've been deceived. But well, how could they be deceived? Because they did not align themselves with the truth of Jesus Christ. Both the beast and the false prophet were thrown alive in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. Finally, Revelation 20, verse 4. 
Then I saw thrones, and the people sitting on them had been given authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their testimony about Jesus and for, for, and for proclaiming the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or his statue, nor had they accepted his mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life again, and they reigned with Christ for a thousand years. And let me just say this. We know the story that Jesus went to the cross, was crucified, was buried, but then he came to life again. He was resurrected. He was the firstborn of those raised from the dead, but he was raised to eternal life, and he was the first one. Everybody else who dies in Christ, if you have faith in Jesus and you die, you will come alive again, and uh, you will be of the firstborn uh, following Jesus. They all came to life again, and they reigned with Christ for a thousand years. These people knew the truth, and they were not deceived. Because they followed Jesus, they enjoyed eternal life, even if they experienced death. If you have any questions, please ask it on our comment page of this website, and I will answer you. Well, I'll say a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray for every person who has heard this message that they shall not be deceived, Lord, that they will uh, walk towards the truth, that they will pray to Jesus, that they will ask for forgiveness, Lord, that they will follow you, that they will align themselves with you, make Jesus Lord of their life, and that they will be part of the Christian church. Hallelujah. Lord, bless them. Bless their families. Lord, we pray that you would cause them to be aware that they would not be deceived and one day be tempted to take the mark that would eternally doom them and, and damn them to, to hell and destruction. May they understand the truth. May the truth set them free. I ask it in Jesus' name. Folks, I just want to tell you, um, on this website, uh, under videos and then uh, from the host, there's uh, a video in there called Making Jesus Lord. And if you want to say a prayer, there, there's, a, there's a prayer in there that you can repeat the words to ask for forgiveness, making Jesus Lord of your life, and you'll be saved. The Bible says anybody who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But salvation in Jesus is the only way to be rescued from the temptation of the mark. The Bible talks of that being a, uh, uh, in the last days. We don't know how far that is. But here we are today. We're seeing things happening in this world that you have to do this or you're going to be denied, denied that. You can't buy or sell unless you do this. One day, that command will be issued, take the mark, or you can't buy and sell. It'll take great faith to be able to withstand that temptation. This is Bob Maduck from RWM Blue Water Ministry, declaring blessings on you and yours till we meet again. Amen. <laughs>